behind the scenes like never before. Backstage Brew. Backstage Brew is at the Park Theatre now. We're chatting to the director, Martha, and the writer and star of the show, effectively, Gemma, um, who has written this piece over the last two years. The process has been like really interesting. We've just been chatting about it. And now we get to find out all about it. Yay! Firstly, what's in your brew, of course, the premise of the show. Awesome. OK, so I've got a, a breakfast tea with oat milk. Um, and I'm so sorry, I just can't get on board with that oat milk. <laughs> I love the oat milk. I'm trying, I'm trying, I just can't do it. Yeah, see, I'm very much an oat milk person as well. Just, look, in it's tea, it's creamy, it's better. It's better in coffee, it is, but it's, it isn't in tea. I'll drink both I will, of them. I will die on this, no, I'll still <laughs> drink it, but I will die on this hill. In the, yeah. My favourite bit about it was obviously you two were rehearsing when, I, when the brews were made and my favourite thing was the milk had been in the fridge and I was chatting to your wonderful producer Naomi and uh, she got it out and the fridge was that cold that it had frozen so she had to shake it to make the tea. I did see that yesterday, there's actually like a layer of milk stuck to the bottom of the fridge oh, as nice. well. Nice, nice. Mm. So maybe try that one at home, frozen oat milk with your brew. Um, let's chat about the piece. Um, you've obviously been working on it for, for two years, obviously Martha you've been on the project as well quite a lot as well with R&Ds and various different things. Making your own work, what's your advice for people? Because it's, um, it's kind of, I feel like it's the way to go. We were chatting about this earlier. But also, there are many pros to it, but also probably some pitfalls. Um, what have you experienced over the last two years kind of working on this project together? Um, so, bits of advice, I would say, is just put stuff out there. Like, don't be scared to trial a five minute piece in front of an audience if you find an open mic night or something like that. Um, also, really handy to just connect with producers or directors around your age who want to make the same work as you. Because I feel like that was something that was so great about having Ma on it from the beginning. And you, when you've got a little team, you've got people driving you to do it as well, which is so important. Um, and yeah, I think when it comes also to the actual content, I think people have ideas for a very long time and they like the idea of doing something and then just the idea of actually just like making the thing is incredibly daunting. And I think my, yeah, probably the, the biggest thing I've learned is just make something you want to see and then it's much easier to make. Yeah. If you just write something that you would want to go and watch and then always in the back of your mind is like, would I watch this? Would I read this? Then the enjoyment of it, sometimes not always comes back mm -hmm. um, and the stress of it goes away because you're just like oh cool I'm just I can't make anything else apart from something that I would want to watch yeah and it's difficult in that like yes I've been thinking about it for two years but I haven't been working solidly in any way on it for two years because you have to work other jobs to make money yes. and whether that's in theatre whether it's like a completely different job which I've been doing for the past year um, and I think short and intense bursts of m making the work are actually more productive. Mm -hmm. I've found like sitting with it in my brain for a really mm -hmm. long time and not doing much about it isn't helpful. Yeah. Um, whereas like last year we did an R&D and again that was made possible by funding that I got given from Arts Council which was because I had a friend who was a producer who helped me with the application. Like it's important you have all that help and support. Yeah. Um, it's you can't do it on your own. Yeah. I mean, some people might be able to, but that hasn't been this getting, process. Getting at in all. rooms has been like the most useful. Yeah. Like even this week, like we're on day four of rehearsal, we spent three days being like, yeah, we're definitely going to do like this stylistic thing, and you know, I like have these mics in this place. We stand up, do it for honestly five lines with mics, and I'm like, nah, get rid of the mics. Like it's literally all you need to do sometimes is just, just see it, it yeah. and then you just know. And like when we did the first workshop here, like last March, again we've been talking about it for so long. And it was like not making any sense, like the structure of it, because it's, it's a relatively like funky structure, like we're doing something a bit weird. <laughs> but, um, and so it was like, ha like talking about it and theorizing it for so long. It doesn't help. We just hit this wall and then we came into this room and we were like, oh, wait, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Like that's, that's how we're gonna do it then. And then Gem could go away and actually write that. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like you have to like make work that you want to make as well, like because you have to enjoy making it. And it, I think making stuff that you know is kind of like the advice that I've always been told. And obviously, this story kind of airs on kind of a personal side for you, um, with a bit of fiction as well. So, for people who are kind of coming to watch, what can they expect? I suppose is what I want to know. Um, they can expect incredible music, um, a story that 
if it were told stripped of any theatricality, it would probably be very heavy. Mm. Um, we talk about addiction, abortion, all those big things, but actually we found a form and a way of making it silly and there's a lot of multi-rolling, there's um, a lot of dress up and it feels quite, it's just very playful, I think, and that's what we really wanted to do because I don't think people want to sit for an hour and watch what you talk about incredibly like traumatic right. things I don't watch that. without <laughs> laughing do you know what yeah, I mean and no. yeah so we've I think hopefully it's going to be quite funny yeah yeah, yeah that is yeah what Jem said really basically. sweet yeah. yeah finding the like hopefully it's yeah it's going to be really playful mm. and um I think there's a lot as well as you know as I can say because I haven't written it <laughs> is that there's I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of themselves in this um and that's quite that's quite easy to like throw around, but like there's something that Gemma has touched on about like, particularly about being a woman, um, and like the female experience that I think is so specific and so nuanced. Um, I think it's gonna it's gonna touch a lot of people in ways that they weren't expecting. Mm. It take them by surprise. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things, points I wanted to kind of like touch on today was the fact like that it's such an important piece that people need to see. Like, I'm sure there's so many people out there who say that they're educating themselves on various different things, but actually like shows like this are great because you educate yourself and it's not like kind of like forced down your throat. It's not anything like that. It, it is fun, but also like you learn a lot. Like, and I suppose a lot of these things in there, as much as it is a fun show, they are in really important things that we still need to talk about. Mm. And I think it's been really interesting throughout the process because I started writing it when I was thinking about my Nana who died and had grown up in a very different era to where we are. Um, but so much of the stigma around abortion has continued. We've been working with an amazing charity called Alliance for Choice, and they were talking about the shame. Uh, they particularly work in like Northern Ireland, where it's still a huge problem, um, access to abortion, and just how the shame around it that women carry that's probably come from generations before hasn't gone anywhere. Um, and yes, we are. But also there's a really interesting conversation in there of when, uh, for example, a nana has been far more sort of suppressed than you are, is there any bitterness there in that relationship? We are quite liberated in comparison to her generation. Yeah. Like, and what that does to female relationships, to family relationships, and who carries that trauma and how we heal from it. Yeah, for sure. So when you're directing something like that, like that is, it's kind of touching on something like something that we haven't actually like explored. I suppose in the mainstream, which is a bit different, there is a massive character arc in this. Do you have to plot that out? I suppose obviously working with Jem, who's kind of created the piece, it is a lot easier. You've done the R and Ds, but what's your process in terms of like making the whole thing flow as a, as a full piece? Because that's kind of like the next step, I suppose. Yeah, honestly, the writing does so much of it. Um, when like you can't hide from bad writing mm. and good writing just makes everything easier and better and more fun and so like I've just I feel like I've just been given <laughs> genuinely I feel like I've just been given this gift of this piece of writing no, 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 no. no really no really I have and so I get to like play with these intensely like no intensely even in the wrong word like complexly brilliant characters mm. that Gemma has created from her own imagination um, and getting to talk about them in a room with these brilliant actresses, um, Olivia and Susanna, and Gemma, obviously, and getting to talk about them as if they're real people, because, like, quite frankly, they really are, because they're so well realised, is just a, is just a bit of a um, a gift to be honest. What I would say though is my brain is like a mess, <laughs> is a mess. So the way the process of writing this has been incredibly messy, and to have someone so skilled at looking at your mess and making it something has been a dream in that the structure was all over the place and Martha could come in and just piece a story together from it. Um, and I think when you've, when you've also written your own stuff, you're so in it, mm -hmm. you, you almost don't see it anymore for what it is and, and it's taken a lot of work from her to get me out of rhythms that are in my head because I've written it and that's how I've said it for so long. But that's not how it should be said. And Martha has a way of like, finding specificity and nuance in something that I didn't think was even there. Um, so yeah, it's just, 
have very talented friends. It's lovely. <laughs> I think that's potentially the most detailed compliment I've ever heard. <laughs> Specificity and nuance in that. I mean, honestly, it's like we're virgin. We're five minutes away from like, no, I love you more. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not, this is great. So we've got so many people in yeah. this team that um, went to uni yeah. with us and it's just been like, you know, we've just had two yeah. years of shit, do you know what I mean? And it's you're in a room and you've got friends and you're making something. It's been this great something. thing of like, we, we talk about this yesterday, of like, it's so amazing working with people that you, that you know and you like learn with in a lot of ways. You know, a lot of what we learn about theatre and who we want to be as theatre makers, we did learn at UEA where we went to uni. Mm. But then we've gone off, you know, we graduated like six years ago almost seven years ago, we go off and we like have all done our own respective like journeys within theatre, all having really quite different experiences. And then we get to come back and like pull all those experiences together. You know, I hadn't worked with Jen before this and we've gone off and we've done our very own very separate careers. Yeah. And so I think to come back and then like sort of find each other again as artists, but with everything that we, all our life experience and um, like yeah the experience in theatre that we have developed over the last six years is it's yeah it feels like a very special thing because life is better when you've got a cuppa on the go <sighs> this is backstage brew yeah 100 and you bring those experiences back but i was thinking when you were chatting then we've all been to like university and, and drama school and different things but i think people watching this who are at drama school will go oh my god they went to drama school as well but my next question was going to be like, so what techniques are you using? Are you larbening? Are you actioning, objectiving? But like, I feel like the experience being in a room is very different to how you expect it will be from drama school. How much has your process changed since you were training? Oh I, my God, so much. Yeah. So I've, I didn't, well, no, you go. No, you go, because I didn't actually go first. to drama school, really. So we did some like drama school elements at, mm. at uni, like we did some acting training and stuff. But I mainly like just wanted to direct from when I was like 18. Yeah. So most of the stuff I remember doing, like most of the training, I feel like I got was just practicing being in being in rooms really when, like from quite a young age and then I was got quite lucky I went into like some pretty like sick rooms <laughs> yeah. when I was like when I graduated so I got to watch like people at the very 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 top of their game work with text and that's mainly how I feel I approach everything which is why I say that like being given a play that's this good is a gift because everything I do comes from what's on the page mm. and that doesn't mean it's like heavy and like you know, like sort of um, intellectual mm -hmm. particularly, but it's like everything is inspired by what is written um, and having that thing to work from is like, it really, I don't really think beyond that, everything else just comes out of that. So I was yeah. like, I'll read something and I'll just like often kind of know how to explore it. Um, what were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, um, being totally honest, I actually found I had to throw away a lot of drama school yeah, um, uh, to get to where I am. In that, I think they're trying to teach, and don't get me wrong, my teachers, some of them were f phenomenal, and I learned so much from. The majority of them were really phenomenal, but there was a kind of culture, which I don't think was anyone's specifically anyone's fault, but there was a culture of fear, of failure, and um, being mocked in front of audiences of your like colleagues and friends and I think because of that I left drama school feeling just fearful of fucking everything um, and it took me a while to shake that off and then just be like no I do have the ability and the confidence to do this um, and I would just yeah I don't know I'm very wary of a lot of the atmospheres at drama schools. I don't know about everyone's experience. Some people have absolutely loved it, but I think that um, when there is this feeling of like, God is watching and can tell you if you're shit or not, um, you will never make your best work ever. No. Um, and it's about being free from that. Yeah. And I've had to actually just kind of go, that was that period of my life and I've come out of it and I learned a lot and I'll take a lot from it, but also I want to keep it there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My yeah, mind, no. yeah. Yeah, it's what, like interesting what you say about like sort of intimidation and that's just not, I, just not my experience of like, you know, good, nice professional rooms. It's yeah. definitely not like rooms I want to, you know, work in or run, but yeah. just like, okay, well, let's just all, if we all just like have a nice time, then yeah. we'll probably make something better. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> I, like, shit yeah. I had exactly the same experience where it was like, 
the training was great, but the atmospheres were terrible. Like, so when I graduated, I was like, oh my God, I've got my like momentum back now after drama school. Cause like when you're there, what you said about peers as well, like they're all kind of like, I don't know, there's a weird like, this industry is impossible kind of vibe when actually it's really not like, especially when you're making incredible work like this. Well, I think it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's caring less. Like, cause, cause I still have the, Oh, I hate the word ca uh, passion, <laughs> but I still like love it so much. But when you're in that environment, it's about um, being the best, and I just really don't like like teams like that. Whereas all the best work we've made has felt so collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, it is, yeah. it is a thing of like it's, sometimes it's you have to remind yourself of this in a room. Like if you know, if, for me, like as as a creative, like I've been in like creative teams where I just have to like for a second be like wait we all want the same thing like we all want the same thing we all want the show to be good no one is <laughs> like, against each other here yeah. so it's just always remembering that it's always remembering that like you know people throw like collaboration around a lot it's like what does that actually mean and it's like just making sure that everyone is valued everyone is listened to um, everyone feels safe and that like we all remember that we're like not doing brain surgery That's you know like I I we're not saving it... the world like we're like making we're making a play. <laughs> Some of it so is like throwing away self-importance and just being like, we're here to have fun, entertain people, tell very important stories, and I really do believe in the importance of that, of yeah. sharing like live work. But what's what they say? It's, nobody it's, is take, take the work seriously, but not yourself seriously. That's it. That's the one. There that. we go. There you go, moral of the story for today. Um, I've got two more things I want to touch on. Obviously, I mean, the main message of the show is come and see it because it's really important that everyone watches it. But one of the things in the show is spoken word, which I bloody love, right? Um, how did that come to sneak its way in? Have you a bit of a spoken word fanatic? Um, yes, I like poetry. Um, <laughs> I find speaking about poetry so cringeworthy. Do you want me to tell no, how no, we're no, going yeah, to do it? Um, um, Maybe it's probably better coming from you. I You're love. Just gonna do this the whole time. <laughs> probably. I love. I love spoken word. Gemma's an incredible spoken word poet. I think it can be done really badly. Um, no stop. But I that's probably me. I do love it, and I'm very good at it. Do you know what? As well, what I will say is, from starting spoken word and poetry, the. Um, like organizations within it the people I've come across in open mics there is such an like a warmth around the vibe um, of artists and there's no kind of judgment there which I found actually in theater there's a lot of like criticism and cliqueiness that um, not always but that is present and in spoken word I've actually just met some really really lovely wonderful warm supportive people That's so um, nice. and it is it is really nice and i've wanted i think what i've loved with spoken word is i've found it a really natural way of telling stories mm -hmm. that i hadn't tried before but that i had only really started doing in the pandemic because i was like it's really easy to write my own thing record it and just see what i can do mm -hmm. um and yeah, I, I love it. Everyone mocks it, but I don't care because I love it. Who's yeah. everyone? I don't know. I just I feel don't. like it's very mockable. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've had similar. To be fair, I love spoken word as well, but I feel like for me, one of the other things I was going to say is like, do you find it easier to like, kind of like, um, reflect your like feelings and opinions and stuff into spoken word and then because it kind of then travels into script doesn't it from that? Like I find it a lot easier to like put it into like a spoken word poem. Although I only struggle when I'm like, what rhymes with that? Like, I'm the worst with like rhyming and stuff. I find the rhyming of stuff frees me in that I'm not trying to think of the most intelligent word to use. I'm not trying to think of, like I did this writing exercise once where it was um, one character says a sentence and another character replies with a sentence yeah. and every single word in that sentence has to have one syllable. And some of the most powerful like pieces of dialogue came out. And I think that's what spoken word, like it's not people, it's people that think in really different original ways and then can make something so musically and so musical and interesting to listen to. Um, and I find the rhyming for me sometimes stops me being like, oh, you're not clever enough because if it sounds good, then someone will want to hear it. Um, and that's what I've really liked.
about it. Yeah, and it's in the play as well, which is great. Yeah. So you've got a number of different things to come and see in this play, which can be very exciting and lots of fun. Before we go, um, one big question, right? Obviously, there's a few things in there we've touched on it that's like kind of addressing issues, right? And there's still plenty of issues in the world that we need to get rid of, right? They're still prevalent, uh, it's annoying, but we're getting there. But if you could go on a mission, right, and you can't pick each other or anyone in the cast, right, to get rid of all the issues in the world, if you could go on like a, a two people mission to like eradicate all these bad issues in society, who would you choose anyone in the world to do it with? I'm gonna go with Michelle Obama. Okay, yeah. Because she is, just everything I hope to be at some point in my life. I just also I think that. she's got all the, she's got. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Great. I just, she speaks for she's, herself. Oh God, she'd look <laughs> after you, wouldn't she? She's just. She'd make you feel so safe. Yeah, she's a gorgeous human. Um, like one of my mates, I don't know. Yeah. Can't well. pick which one. We'll take that, that's cool. Yeah. Any particular reason? Um, Cause you just also want to have a laugh. While you're doing it, otherwise it gets so heavy. I reckon I could have a laugh with Michelle, though. You could, and that's the thing. <laughs> and you've become mates. So actually, you've, <laughs> that's it. You've smashed it. I really want a new friend on it, her. You've smashed it. Like, if I'm going to go on, like, this big round-the-world trip, like, I'm going to have to go with someone I like, yeah. you know? There you go. Taking over the world, can't wait for it. Um, there you go, girls. Thank you so much for joining me. It was such an incredible chat, and so interesting to find about the play and about you know where it came from and the process. And uh, I can't wait to see it. It's on very soon, which is when first to the fifth of March. Are you going to join in? <laughs> first to the fifth of March at the Pleasant. Yeah. Um, it's eight pm and six pm. Also, make all turn up lights. First to the fifth of March at the Pleasant. And tickets are available where? Um, on the Pleasant's uh, website. website. And where are your social medias? At Agatha the Show on <laughs> look at Naomi. At Agatha the Show on Twitter or Gemma's Instagram, which is at Gem L for Louise Barn. For Louise specifically. Gemma Barnett, you'll find me on Instagram. Gemma Barnett, you'll find her. Big on the spoken word scene. Big up the spoken word scene. There you go. Pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on Backstage Brew. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Backstage Brew with Mark Jarvis. 